Okay, it says we're live now on YouTube. It says we're live now on YouTube? Yeah. Sounds good. What's going on, everybody? Just wanted to uh, hop in kind of ahead of the actual podcast and say thanks for hanging in. Zuby has been losing his marbles behind the scenes, fellas. Oh, it's been like a, a string of expletives as he uh, works his magic and uh, we sit here for 20 minutes waiting, but we actually have people that hung in, guys. There's like 20 people that have just been sitting there waiting. So we thought we'd just come well, chat with you and say thanks. Yeah, a lot of them are waiting to see if Struds showed up on time today. So oh, we're all excited. Oh. That he's here. Hey, Struds. And he showed up with his mic muted, too. We, let's just let him keep talking. Oh, my talking. God. That's. That is the best he's hey. ever sounded. Seriously, Damn. keep talking, Damn. Stretch. Yeah, hey, Sorry. you only had 25 extra minutes to make sure your mic was on, buds. <laughs> okay, well, while you guys were, were chirping Zuby, I was being proactive. I'm setting my fantasy lineups. Okay. So I'm in four different fantasy leagues, and then I nice. have like a special one where a different so – I'm actually five – I'm running five leagues right now. I've got a lot going on on this Tuesday night. That's awesome. Oh, we saw that on Sunday night when you didn't show up. <laughs> yeah. we have okay, lots of people hanging in on the stream so we just decided we'd pop in ahead of time and say thanks for waiting zuby has got it all under control so what we're going to do uh when you listen to this in podcast form it's actually just gonna we're gonna have like a fresh start so we're gonna like reset here and you're gonna see how we do that we're gonna get ready to actually start the podcast with our kin print animation and our opening music and all of that but uh, we just figured as an extra little bonus, because you guys hung in so long, we would uh, just pop in and say hi, show you how this works behind the scenes. So Zuby's going to go ahead and put up the title slate, and then he'll run Kin Print, and then we'll be off and running. So uh, to Curb84, Sherry, Jeff, Obelisk, Tracy Arcan, JL, uh, Some Stranger, and all of you champs for hanging in on the stream, thanks. And we hope that the podcast is worth it. It probably won't be. Go ahead, Zoops. Let's do it. Got Your Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products, using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. All right, it is Tuesday night, and welcome to Got Your Back. Y-E-G, Rashad, Strudwick, and Brown. Yes, Rob Brown joining the podcast tonight. Hoping to get through start to finish without any technical disasters. If you only saw what went on behind the scenes to get this pig to the airwaves, and you wouldn't believe it, but Zuby was an absolute champ tonight. Podcast brought to you, as always, by our title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. Want to tell you about a little deal they have going forgot your back listeners and this is for both used and new vehicles when you go in if you buy a newer or used vehicle and you mentioned got your back podcast you'll enjoy two years of complimentary oil changes and as a bonus three free ultimate detail packages so free oil changes and free detailing if you buy a new or used vehicle visit phil and the great crew in sherwood park or online at www sherwoodbuickgmc.com full compliment on the panel tonight rob brown and jason strudwick as we're coming to you from our beautiful long shot studio more than just golf it's a sports destination they got locations on stony plain road and in sherwood park as well what's going on boys well i'll just huh? say you're welcome you're welcome that i'm here on time and uh in a good mood and ready to go <laughs> well, I ba I baked a cake while we were waiting there. It's uh, it's just about to come out of the, the oven. Had a little free time. Um, tastes delicious. Yeah, starting uh, starting about thirty minutes later than we planned because uh, we all hopped into this. We're in this like chat room, and it was the the audio feedback was insane. And so Zuby, uh, Zuby, can you talk to us right now, or are you just way too busy still trying to put out fires back there? No, I'm good. I know what the next shot is, and it's already it's in in good shape. So we're good. so you're already getting ahead of it, Atta boy. And then how many podcasts are... have you done today? Part parts of three or parts of four. 
are you glad you answered your phone when I said, hey, you want to do podcasts together? Because yeah. like <laughs> it's turned into quite the pile of work, bud. It was today. This has been this has been a long day. Not a lot of sleep, and and one more of this, and then an early one tomorrow, and then and then I might rest for a little bit. Oh boy. Well, good job putting out the fires back there. We'll let you get to it. By the way, if you want to send your comments in on the stream, uh, Zuby is going to join us again for our Ask Us Anything segment. So those of you who have been waiting patiently on the stream can get uh, your comments and questions in. Uh, Struds, you want to brag about golf today or are you going to let me? We dismantle the fellow media friend. Why don't you explain what happened and I'll take us through <laughs> what we saw. So Struds and I went toe to toe. Jack Michaels and I are members out at Belvedere. So Struds came out, Jack brought a friend and we went toe to toe, Struds and I against uh, Jack and company. And it was, uh, it was a good back and forth that came down to one final putt right at the very end, Struds. We had to, we had to spot him a few strokes, but uh, it came right down to the wire. It was a glorious victory, Brownie, like really good. It it was good, Brownie. We we spotted a Jack and his buddy nine strokes. <laughs> Seriously, how bad are they? I've seen you golf. <laughs> yeah. So we're we you know we you know I I I I'm like I'm okay. I'm not. I think Shog is a little bit better than me, maybe, and I'm I'm all right. But we I'm in there hitting balls early, and then uh, Jack Michael shows up, and he's wearing red pants. So I'm like, holy geez, this guy, if you're wearing red pants, you better be a good golfer. He took three driving, like three hits with his driver off, off of the uh, driving range. Each one was worse than the last. It was absolutely horrendous how bad it was. And it continued through the whole day. The whole day. <laughs> it was, Hang on. He's not here to defend himself. He knows it's true. Girlie know it's true. It, I was like, anyone who read, was red pants is a good golfer. I was wrong. And I apologize to people oh, who wear boy. red pants. So, that was, oh, my God. Right, I got, I got a, a, a real quick Strudwick golfing story. I played oh, with boy. Struds and Tyson Nash one year at Goose Hummock <laughs> years and years and years ago. And on 18 at Goose Hummock, there's a, a par four that you're supposed to hit straight, but you can drive over top of the water if you're a long ball hitter. And so we all hit balls over the water. We had no idea where they go. You can't really see it. Then we all hit normal balls out into the fairway. We get up to the green, and at the green, all of a sudden, this guy comes over. Hey, is uh, anyone playing a Titleist 4 with three dots on it? And Tyson Nash, yeah, yeah, that's Strudz. Is that Strudz? It's his ball. <laughs> yeah, you just hit my windshield. You owe me $300. <laughs> 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 I did yeah, I oh, I had to. No, I had to. And it was it was a, one of those. Long, it was like an Aerostar van. It had a really long nose. I think it was like six, seven hundred bucks. And he's like, "Oh my God, you're you're Jason Strudick plays in NHL." I'm like, "Yeah, I do." It's like, here, here's your bill. And you I can said, afford it. <laughs> that's I was awesome. Thanks, like, actually. Yeah, that's Strudick's Titleist, Titleist two with three dots. Like that's how we talk. <laughs> it's it so annoying. He just <laughs> turned you in immediately. Could have easily been like, "No, it's yeah, yeah, son yeah, of us. No, yeah. uh, no, not us." Oh, that's fantastic. Well, it was it was a victorious day for us. Um, we had a ton of fun. Uh, Jack's game did come around a little bit later on in the round. I, I, by the way, I've golfed with Jack a lot. I will say I haven't seen him play quite like that before. Uh, he's not. He's pretty good. Uh, but that was definitely an off day, so it was fine to take a few drinks and some cash off of him. All in good fun. All for charity, right, Struds? Yeah, yeah. If I played like that, I'd take two weeks off and then quit. <laughs> 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 he's not here to defend himself you're being a prick <laughs> hours later i, I almost want to i almost want to get him on the phone about four himself. holes left brownie he hits like i thought was a good shot and it, I, unknowingly it went in the water and i'm like somebody's heating up and he kind of gives me a dirty look i'm like oh that's weird <laughs> so we start driving up shogger's like it went in the water <laughs> he's dying like he's already having a certain amount of frustration. <laughs> he tongues one in the water and Struts goes, well, somebody's heating up. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see Jack on Wednesday. Oh, it's going to be so much. Hey, Struts told me about the golf game you guys had. Oh, boy. Somebody's heating up. So I got up to the green. I like apologized. <laughs> and I'm dying inside. I'm dying. Like I thought it was a good shot. But that's the kind of day he had. Oh, Somebody's boy. heating up. <laughs> All right, enough of this mess. People want to hear some hockey talk. Uh, let's get to our breakdown brought to you by Mr. Dirk, an iconic men's clothing store here in Edmonton, founded in 1939. They got a huge lineup of casual clothes, jeans, pants, 
shirts, sweaters, shoes, and on the more formal side, a great selection of brand name suits as well. Everything that you need at Mr. Dirk. Visit MrDirk.com. By the way, Brownie, have you ever heard what Henrik Lundqvist thinks of Jason Strudwick's uh, wardrobe? Uh, I have not. Uh, I've seen how they, they both dress. I have an idea of what he probably said. Lund Lundquist is a very, very nice dresser, and obviously um, yeah. there's Strud's right over there. Let me let me ask him, Hank, what do you think of Strud's attire? You are an absolute horrendous dresser. Is this guy blind? I hope you have a great day. <laughs> is this guy blind? <laughs> I hope you have a great day. Ah, uh, Mr. Dirk, though, doing its best to fix up Strud's. Okay, gents. Um Exhibition game last night. We won't spend a ton of time on that because it's last night. We can talk about some players that maybe caught your eye a little bit, but more in terms of moving forward and what they're going to accomplish. Oilers in action tomorrow. We do believe that Connor McDavid, potentially Leon Dreisaitl as well, will be in the lineup tomorrow. Uh, three exhibition games, maybe four, give or take, for those big guys, but makes sense that they waited this long into camp. Brownie, I mean, you. I know. I heard you say. I think it was with Reed that you really liked playing. But it makes sense for me that they waited till tomorrow night for these guys to go in. Well, I'm not those guys, so I liked playing because I had to. <laughs> um, it, it, it's it, everyone has a different role or a different reason in in preseason. Connor and Leon, when they get in the lineup, they're just trying to find their hands, find their skating, find their timing. Uh, for players that are on the bubble, you want to play every night. Because if you're not in the lineup, someone's got your spot, and that person can do something special. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, that guy that just took my spot had two big hits and a goal. Now I'm further back down uh, the totem pole. So for a player that is looking to, to make his mark, looking for ice time, looking for a contract, you want to play every single game. And that's what you're going to see with the Ernie's, the, the Sutter's, the Voix, all those players. They want to play every single night to give themselves the best chance to get a contract or to get a spot on the team. For Leon and Connor, uh, they're preparing for game one, and the coaching staff will talk to them, say, hey, how many games do you want? When do you want to play them? Where do you want to play? And we'll map out a schedule for you. So uh, Connor and Leon are in better shape on day one of training camp than I was in any time in my entire career. <laughs> so I don't think you really have to worry about the two of those guys be being prepared for game one. I think the challenge for for a player trying to make noise like Brownie's talking about is you do have to find a way to stand out. And you look at the game last and, and standing out doesn't mean a hat trick um, doesn't mean, you know, uh, inciting a brawl. But you have to find a way for people to be drawn to you and, and your eyes to, to look at them. And I, as I watched that game last night, I tried I, I did my best to watch it when I was trying to watch football it wasn't super exciting. Um, but when you're when you're watching it. You know, I, I want to see like a, a, a Rafi level. I want to see that guy use that big body, maybe get, get out of his comfort zone. It's obviously he likes to shoot and score. I mean, that's it's exciting, but that's not what the Oilers need right now. They're not looking for another guy to score. They're looking for someone that can fill a role on that third or fourth line. And it's hard, like the mindset. And, and Rob Brown would be a good guy to ask about this. He went from a score to more of a, uh, like from a top six role to maybe a more bottom six role over his career. But, you know, for, for Lavoie, you can't be a top six scorer in the NHL if you're playing in the American League. So, you know, you got to start somewhere. you got to start on that fourth line and then work your way up. Brownie, is that a, you know, not just to pick on Rafi, but on, on, for a lot of those guys, they got to find a way to, to get in the, in the, on the team. Well, 100%. Uh, I went to Pittsburgh on a, on a PTO at the, near the end of my career. And they had Jaeger and, and Straka and Kovalev. They had all these players. They didn't need a top six player. And I understood that. So I changed the way I played. I started having to hit guys, trying to block shots, getting pucks in deep. And it was easy for me at that part of my career because I was, I was mature. I was experienced. I understood what they needed. It's harder for a younger player because uh, Lavoie, he still thinks he's a goal scorer. He was in the minors, was in junior. Feels he could probably do it at the National Hockey League level. Now he's got to make a decision. Do I want to be a bottom six guy and, and try to find myself into the lineup here in Edmonton? Or am I going to continue to press to be a goal scorer? And as you said, be in the American Hockey League or hope that someone else sees him as a goal scorer. So it, it's hard to convince a younger player to change the way you play. But if you want to play in the National Hockey League, you look at the cards that are dealt. And right now in Edmonton, the only chair that is open 
in this uh, organization is one on the is the 12th or 13th forward, and they don't need a goal scorer in 12 at 13. They need someone that's going to play physical and bring energy. And by the way, they're probably starting with 21, which mm-hmm. 12 and seven. So there isn't even necessarily that extra forward position to be battling over. When it comes to Lavoie, he's trying to make the National Hockey League for the first time. Many, many, many players who have been more offensive-minded through junior have understood that in order to make the jump, you're going to have to change your game. This isn't unique to him. We've seen dozens of guys do it over the years. Uh, He's talked in the media. He's well aware of what he needs to do here. I I don't sense Strud's that he's a guy that's going to fight against what everybody knows he needs to do. I think he's willing. It just maybe doesn't come as natural to him to do things a certain way. But desperation to be in the National Hockey League can really help you change your stripes pretty fast, Rob. Well, it will help you change, but it's one thing to say the right words. It's another thing to go out there and do it. And it's not natural. For an offensive player, it's not natural to lay down in front of a a shot. It's not natural to go uh, run someone in the corner, uh, stand in front of the net, take a beating. Uh, Most offensive players in junior never had to do any of that. So it's it's not natural for them. So you have to change your entire mindset. And uh, you have to have a willingness. And we saw in game one, there were parts of his game that – uh, were good and he used his body a bit, but he still needs to bring energy. And guys that are in the bottom, especially a fourth line guy, he's probably going to be a fourth line guy. It's dump the puck in and try to hit somebody. Yeah. And that's how you get noticed. If you're on the bottom six, bring energy that way. I don't know if he has that in his mindset yet, but he's going to have to find it soon because there's two or three other guys that are going to be trying to do the exact same thing. And, and that's what the team needs. They're looking for size and physical players in, in that bottom six. And, I'm not sitting here saying that Rafael Laval will never be an offensive player in the NHL. I'm just saying if he wants to play in the NHL this year, this is what – sorry, on, I should say this year on the Oilers, that is what it's called for, right? That's that's yeah. what you need to have. So, um, you know, it's a tough one. And, then you know, there, there's other guys like Dylan Holloway is a little further up, I think, the chain than, than he is. And, um, you know, we saw him throw a pretty big hit the other day. But I think Dylan has maybe a little more um, leeway with this, with this coaching staff. But – you just got to figure out what works for you and what is needed. And those, it's sometimes the two of those coming together doesn't always work for a player. Yeah. Anybody else stand out for you, Brownie, last night as much as uh, as you were able to watch? Uh, well, I have to watch. They pay me to do that with you. <laughs> yeah. So I did watch the entire game. Um, honestly, no. It, it was a tough one to, to stand out for the Oilers because the Jets had uh, a much better team last night dressed. They had... 11 or 12 regulars, including their number one power play unit, their best defenseman. Uh, it was a survival mode, and they thought the Oilers for the first 40 minutes were able to survive it. Uh, and then eventually Winnipeg, they, they just did what they wanted in the third period. So I don't know if anyone really stood out in a positive way. I, I think some people didn't hurt themselves, but I'm not sure anyone, like Ernie, for example. There was someone that you really hoped would show something last night. He was okay but didn't knock your socks off. And when you're on a PTO, you've got to do more than just be okay on a regular basis. You have to knock your socks off. There's got to be something special or something you bring at least once or twice a period so that you're noticing the coaches are saying, hey, I really like what that kid did. Struds, we're going to talk about uh, Philip Broberg a little bit later in Struddy's world. But, I mean, feel free to touch on him and what you thought of him last night. But anything else for you, Struds, from that game? Um, no, those, you know, those are the kind of guys I was keeping an eye on, um, Ernie for sure. And, and I like the way you phrase that about him. I, I think what I would say, if you're on a PTO is you have to go for it. You have to go for it. You can't not, you can't just be not noticed. Um, and you know, maybe it gets easier when there's more NHL players in the lineup because it, the games are a little more structured and maybe you're playing with someone who's a little bit quicker or can make plays, but still you're, you're playing against guys or with guys that aren't. NHL level players. So you should look stronger than them. You know, you should look above. I shouldn't look at the paper and say, oh, Strudwick is the same as these three guys that play in the American League last year. I want to say, well, Strudwick it looks like an NHL player. He skates like he hits like that. Like, and then you want that create that separation for yourself. And and quite frankly, that's for any young player trying to come up who maybe isn't a first rounder. Uh, you know, you after 
maybe even a borderline second rounder, but everybody else, you've got to be, you, you can't just be there and be okay. You have got to be above everyone and do more um, than, than everyone else. And that's how you kind of get noticed. And, and we're kind of getting bogged down a little bit in how to make a team. But I think we were talking about the orders where maybe there's one spot available and whatever there's 60 some players come to camp. Um, you know, at the D man, you don't even have a chance, you know, you're just trying to leave a good impression for who gets called up first. And then, you know, the goalies, I think that's set too. So there's one spot on forward. So, you know, it's 40 guys fighting over one spot. Well, I guess not 40 because half the team's there already, but there's not, there's not much. So you cannot hold back. Just go for it. It's better to go out, go down trying than just kind of fit in and fill a jersey. Thought Dylan Holloway was noticeable again, skating well. He had uh, 10 shot attempts. And, you know, he was played almost 21 minutes in that game. So you could tell he was tested out ice time wise. Uh, Lavoie, by the way, was at 1541. Uh, Broberg, a little bit more ice time. He was dash two, played 1722. I thought he was a little bit better in that game than he was in the first one. I thought he was pretty quiet in the first one. I thought he was a little better in that one. I think people need to accept the fact that it's, he's not going to dazzle, I don't think, guys. I think he's just going to try his best to be steady understanding that he's got a real good chance to start the year on the team. I think for right now, he's just going to try and be steady and earn trust. And I just don't think this is a guy we're going to be talking about as blowing the doors off in exhibition season. He, I, and, I, and I think strides that maybe naturally he's a bit of a slow starter too. Which is dangerous. You know, when, when, when the opportunity, now that's two, there'd be two years in a row, right? Like last year, I think there was higher expectations on what, than what he delivered. And I think this year, it feels like he's being put into position where you know there's there's a plenty of opportunity for him there so you you don't i think he's maybe feeling his way in a little bit into it i i i understand that feeling but when there's opportunity like this you've got to come in and just kick that door down and say i have got this i'm going to do this um especially the way he skates my god if i could have skated like that poof numbers would have been crazy (laughs) yeah (laughs) how would skating faster have helped the hands (laughs) <laughs> well my yeah. my feet could keep up with my brain what, what was it more like did you have better feet or better hands struds if you could have improved one of the two what would it have been oh god that's a really uh i think the skating okay, I, I wait, is there an skate. all of the above can he put <laughs> all of the above <laughs> i i think if i could have skated like kulak because i i would have loved to have gone on it in and out more like and and you know surfed over more for defending rushes like I I and not that I was a bad skater towards the end of my career it, it you know it, I, yeah everyone towards the end of the career looks slow but I, I wish I could have skated better um I don't know brownie say the same thing <laughs> what are you asking me for I couldn't skate my entire career I was terrible <laughs> I always wanted you know what Madano I played against Madano where his shirt would in the yeah. back it would be like waving as he's skating up the ice yeah. my shirt never moved like seriously <laughs> yeah. never moved I, I go as fast <laughs> The fastest I ever skated in my entire career, I was in a face-off in the offensive zone, and I was out against Solani in Korea in Anaheim. And Solani took off, and I grabbed the back of his shirt, and he pulled me down the length of the ice. Fastest I ever skated in my entire career. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, by the way, Rob Brown's appearance is here on the podcast, brought to you by Kin Print, helping you push your business brand to the next level, visit kinprint.ca. Okay, that'll do it for the breakdown, guys. We're going to get to takeaways coming up next. Uh, we interviewed, well, Dregs and Ray Ferraro interviewed Mark Stone on the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast today. And as you guys know, we are now in partnership with them. So we asked him his got your back story, and uh, he gave us a pretty cool one. So we've got that coming up in Struddy's world. We're going to talk a little bit uh, a little bit more Oilers. So stick around if you haven't gotten your Oiler fix just yet. Very quick break. Tons more content. Thanks for hanging with us. Okay, heroes. Are you trying to tough it out through a sports or life injury right now? Trying to prove your mettle by grinding through, gritting your teeth? Well, Redefined Health is here to say it's time to come on in. At Redefined Health, they'll high-five you for your toughness and then get to work on helping you fix the problem. Helping athletes and heroes find better balance, performance, and injury prevention, visit RedefinedHealth.com. Are you ready to elevate your moving experience? Trusted for over 100 years, Ferguson Moving and Storage are your partners in relocation, ensuring your journey is smooth and stress-free. And say goodbye to surprises with Ferguson's transparent flat rate pricing. 
Contact them now for a free moving quote and use the promo code FERGUSON to receive $100 off your next move. Visit fergusonmoving.com and let them lift your expectations. All right, time now for takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health, who you just heard a little bit more about. If you're feeling unhappy with your overall level of help, you got to try their wellness lifestyle program. It's a unique 90-day program. They set you up with a daily meal plan, exercise regimen, video instruction and supports, pre and post assessment to help you monitor your progress. Brownie, I'm thinking you and I maybe need to sign up for something like, we'll make you deal struds. You go to Mr. Dirk, Brownie and I will go to Redefined Health and we'll all fix what's clearly wrong with all of us. All of that, by the way, for 150 bucks, go see Dr. Tyler Fix at uh, redefinedhealth.com. Um, Mark Stone, remember that video of him on the bench skating off the ice, looking like he could barely move in the playoffs? Do you guys see that that was tweeted out, how banged up he was? You think about what this guy's put his body through the last couple of uh, last couple of seasons and how much of a gamer he was. He's a Stanley Cup champion captain now. But, Struddy, what do you think of when I say Mark Stone? I think he's everything about a hockey player that's right. I, I love him. I love the way he leads – I love the way he plays. I love the way he strips pucks off of players. He's in the right place all the time. And I would not define him as a beautiful skater, you know, compared <laughs> to some, uh, besides some guys. But he just is always doing everything right on the ice. And uh, I, I think it's just an incredible leader to have on your team. Brownie, what do you think of him? Well, I think of uh, ultimate competitor, warrior. Uh, he's one of my favorite players in the league to watch. And it's not because he's pretty, as Strud said. I mean, he might be an uglier skater than I was, faster, <laughs> but uglier. Um, but it just, you're drawn to him when you watch him play. And he's one of those guys, when the coach puts on the ice, you feel confident and comfortable because he's going to do all the right things all the time. So uh, as much as I'm an Oiler fan, uh, you know, when you watch Tim win a Stanley Cup, you're like, there's a guy that deserves a Stanley Cup. 100%. Well, we want to remind everybody, Got your back. Uh, it's it's a podcast, but it's a concept too, right? We love asking people about that time in their life where somebody had their back. We love getting those stories, right? So Pierre and I last season, uh, on season one of our podcast, we asked all of our guests, Struds and I have also asked people that have come on. Brownie, you told us a beautiful story the other night about Joe Sackick saving your life. We love to hear people's <laughs> got your back stories. That actually includes listeners too. If anybody out there has a story that they want to share with us, we'll actually read them here on the live stream and on the podcast. Just fire us an email, gybpod at gmail.com. If you have a story about a time in your life where someone really had your back, it can be big, small, goofy, funny. It can be whatever you want it to be. We've had all kinds of different stories. We would love to read some listener stories uh, in this segment at some point here on the podcast. So that's gybpod at gmail. Dot com. Mark Stone, talking to Ray and Dregs on the Ray and Dregs Hockey Podcast today, was asked that question by Darren Dreger. So we thought, hey, let's drop in the answer. Kind of a cool one about how somebody believed in him back in the day before most of us knew who he was. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I guess off the top of my head, ironically, uh, when I got drafted, I probably was borderline going to get picked and a guy who really fought for me uh, was Bob Lowe's, uh, who ironically is with, with us here now in, in Vegas. Um, he really fought for me to, uh, to get drafted for one, uh, to be given a chance to, to be a pro. Um, you know, he really was the guy who uh, kind of put his, uh, put his neck out there for me to, uh, to, to, to get Ottawa to, uh, you know, I guess use, um, you know, I guess I don't even know what the word is, but use like all, all their resources to uh, to try and help me, and um, I owe a lot to him to help me get here. Yeah, guys, you know people might not quite know that how much you need to have someone champion you at a certain point in your career for you to get that opportunity. I had that for my tiny, teeny, tiny little you know, walk-on cup of coffee in the Western Hockey League. But for those that aren't the first-round picks or the high draft picks. Somebody that believes in you, somebody that can kind of push you behind the scenes. Mark Stone clearly had that, but Brownie, the, the, there's tons of stories like that in hockey. There, there is. Uh, when I came back after spending a few years in the minors, when I went to a PTO in Pittsburgh, uh, Craig Patrick 
uh, was there. His brother, Glenn Patrick, was a scout. And he pushed for me. And he was a guy that in the scouting meetings when they're trying to talk about, you know, who do we want? And I was just trying to get back into the National Hockey League. And he was a guy that pushed for me and kept bringing my name up and kept pointing out the positives. You need that guy. And every scout, there's all the players that are drafted, a certain scout drafted him. So they're always pushing their player. Because if one of their player makes it, they look like, hey, look, I drafted that guy. I'm a successful scout. So you need somebody that's in your in your corner pushing for you, telling the GM, telling the coach, telling everyone around the table. And uh, not everybody is a, a superstar. Not everyone walks into the league like Connor or Leon or Nurse. Most of us, as Struds will tell you, most of us have to fight and need a break, need a bounce, need an opportunity. And then you take advantage of it. Not everyone has an easy way. Yeah, it's so true. And you look at Stone, like he was a six-round pick. Now, I think this, the year after he was drafted in the sixth round, he scored like 30 goals in the Western League. So, you know, he, he popped. Made the guy looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that, that scout probably felt pretty good about himself. Um, but, you, you know, I think you do, you do have to be lucky, but you have to be ready for when your, your name gets called, right? When you get it, you're, you, you've done the preparation for it. And that's, that's why I always, I, I think when you look at guys that have prolonged NHL careers, they're the hardest workers. Right. They, they just they're always working, trying to get better. And they're always strong. They're rehabbing this injury, getting ready. If you don't work really hard, you, you can get to the NHL, you know, just based on skill. But you don't always last. Um, but you look at the guys that play seven, eight, nine, one thousand games like they are hard, hard workers, uh, both on and off the ice. We got a story in here from Dawson Nielsen on the stream. We asked for them. So Dawson sent one in, just a quick one. And, and we really appreciate it. It says, Rafi Torres had my back. 2006, I was getting bullied at school for being a ginger. Torres shared his life stories, taught me to embrace being a ginger. He's the reason I became an Oiler fan. That from Dawson Nielsen sharing his got your back story there on the stream. I love it. You guys got, sure you got some experience with Torres, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we got into a little bit, but it's because he's such a good hitter, right? And I was trying to be preemptive. So I was trying to be like, if you even look at me, I'm going to break your arm. You know, like I was trying to scare him because I was actually really scared of scared of him. <laughs> yeah, he was a devastating hitter, boy. When oh, he lined, oh, man. So scared. My, in the minors, we won a championship, and we played against Bridgeport in the finals. And in the final game of the playoffs, we beat them. If we hadn't beat them, we would have had to go back to Bridgeport. Rafi Torres was on the team, and he hit Dallas Akins so hard, knocked him out. Dallas wasn't coming back in the series if we would have lost that game. It was one of the most devastating hits I've ever seen. And wow. Torres was a rookie. Dallas Akins was late in his career, and we held, we had to carry him off the ice, Dallas Akins, because he got hit so hard by Rafi Torres. Man. Probably couldn't ride his bike for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I jest. Uh, appreciate your stories, folks. Uh, that was Takeaways, brought to you by Redefined Health. Okay, coming up next, yeah. Ask Us Anything and Struddy's World. Also, our gem of the day, the moment in the podcast that we like the best is our gem of the day by United Sport and Cycle. So lots of content still to come. Very short break. Stay with us. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line track band simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. Just me and Nick Lachey, window down, shirt off, just loving it. My goal is someday made me Forrest Gump. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. All right, Strutty's World brought to you by DLR Vinyl Decking and Fencing. They got locations in Calgary and Edmonton. They provide beautiful maintenance-free vinyl fencing and decking materials. There's still time to build new maintenance-free deck that you'll love come spring. And you know you've got a deck that won't need any staining or painting. I've got one. I love it. It's my family's company. It's run by my brothers. Uh, visit DLRVinylProducts.ca. Strutty, what's on your mind, buddy? With so many 
spots locked up. There hasn't been a lot of debate about who should make the team or who won't make the team, but there has been quite a bit of discussion around the Oilers' defense. I think we can all agree that Nurse, Bouchard, and Ekholm are the top three defense for Thamton Oilers. They're short one. I believe they're short one. Now, CC played like a you know, fourth defenseman probably this first year here. Last year, not quite the same with apparently nursing some injuries. Um, and then you've got, you know, uh, Kulak and Darnay, and then you've got Broberg. Now, we're seeing that uh, it looks like Woodcroft at times is is going to put uh, Nurse with uh, Bouchard. So that leaves a spot open beside Ekholm. And, you know, many people think maybe Broberg's the guy who will get that spot. I was quoted earlier in this podcast, we did one earlier, where I thought it'd be very difficult or unlikely that either Darren Ayer or Broberg could jump up into the top four. It's to go from kind of, you know, being a, you know, an in and out player or a small admin player to all of a sudden jumping up on a Stanley Cup champion to a top four, I thought it'd be difficult. But I think I'm willing to give this a try if I'm Jay Woodcroft, and this is why. Ekholm is a very steadying presence for anyone who plays with him. Hell, I could have played with him, and I think he would have made me more steady. But when you put a guy like Brober beside him, who's Swedish, um, who, just like Ekholm, they have that relationship, he's a good skater, you're essentially putting beside another coach. They can talk to him, build him up, build up his confidence, or bring him down, if, if the case may be sometimes. Uh, you know, Encourage him to take risks with the way he can skate, the way he can pass the puck, the way he can skate the puck. And I like that duo there. And I'm, I'm going to compare it to a duo we think of in the past and what the impact that guy had on. So Dan O'Chara uh, was very instrumental in bringing along Charlie McAvoy. McAvoy's talked about it before. And they were partners. And, you know, Z, Z was a lot older than uh, McAvoy was at the time. Now, Ekholm is in Char, and I don't know that Mac or that uh, Ekholm's going to be McAvoy. But you can still have those moments where you talk to each other and build each other up. And especially for Ekholm, I like to look at this. Guys, I'm willing to see this. I'm not convinced that he can be that guy this year, but I want to see it because of the relationship with the Swedes, but also that kind of, you know, second coach right beside you on the bench helping you all the time. Brownie, what do you think? At home, Broberg. My question is how well, long can it last? <laughs> well, they want to see it. They need to see it. Contracts are forcing them to see it. There's a difference of Broberg playing the minutes that he played last year when he was in the lineup against the lesser competition and then playing with Ekholm, who's going to be taking uh, minutes away from Nurse. They want Ekholm and, and Nurse to share the big minutes in a hockey game. So whoever Ekholm is on the ice with is going to be playing against the other team's top players. We haven't seen yet in Broberg's game that he's capable of playing against the Jack Eichels. The Sidney Crosby's, the um, Shifley's, I mean, Pedersen from Vancouver. We haven't seen he's capable of doing that. Now, maybe he grows into it, but right now, I think it's a trial for Broberg playing there. I think that his skating allows him a bit of a step up on DeHarnay. But to Strudge's first point when he started that, his um, buddy's world, <laughs> I'm not sure on a Stanley cup championship team broberg is your top four defenseman i'm not sure about that yet i know they're going to try it but i do believe that uh he's got a lot of work ahead of him because ekholm is not playing minutes against third and fourth liners when ekholm's on the ice it's against the other team's best players see struds i i think we've come to realize that nurse and bouchard i mean there's something that the team wants to try jay woodcroft wants to see if he can put those guys together and if they can be a big minute munching sort of top pair. And I think part of the reason there is because they do really want to try Ekholm and Broberg together. I think they want to give Philip Broberg every opportunity to have some success this year and to just bull his way into the lineup. I think he's going to get this early look. But I'm not sure that you know it sticks because I'm not sure he'll be able to grab it right away. And I just, I, I, when I say how long is it going to last, let's see how he does. Maybe he'll play well and things will go fine. But what I don't necessarily foresee is a ton of patience if it's not going well because the orders want to get off to a good start. Coaches get impatient. Yes, they understand development is important too, but you're going to have Cody Cece sitting there. 
and you're going to have Vinny Dernay doing whatever he might do. I just wonder how, as much as it's a good idea, and I understand the experiment, how much patience is there going to actually be for it, Struds? Well, I think that because we're having the conversation, let's just all agree they're a D-man short, right? In their top four, like that's if if they had that guy, they wouldn't. We wouldn't be talking about this because that guy is there. And it's the guy they'll go get at the deadline, Brownie. Like, they're not going to well, try and win a cup with Broberg in their second pairing. They'll put someone ahead well, of him. Sorry, Struds. No, no, but if, if if he can do that role, this will be like found finding a million dollars in your pocket. Actually, it'd be more like $6 million to get one of those D-men, right? Mm -hmm. So I think they're praying that it works. They're praying, but they don't have a guy in, in, in house that can do it. Um, so I agree. I think they probably go and add that guy. But they're going to give us a chance because I don't think they believe that CC is that guy either. Otherwise, he but, wouldn't. They wouldn't be doing this experiment. There's another thing to to look at in in this too as well, guys. Is is the Bouchard nurse pairing a pairing that's going to work as well? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'm a fan of Darnell Nurse. Not everyone here in Edmonton is, but Darnell Nurse. There are nights where uh, there's mistakes that are very noticeable. Mm -hmm. Bouchard, incredible with the puck on his stick, great on the power play defensively that's still a work in progress so if that's a pairing that's going against the other team's top lines do you have complete faith in it right now yeah yeah and i think that matthias ekholm's game can insulate a player in a different way than darnell nurses can right darnell still plays the game out with a certain amount of there's some risk in his game and there's some a little bit of a little bit of stuff in his game that makes him less of an insulating factor than Ekholm is. So yeah, is is Evan Bouchard's game in a place where he no longer needs that anymore from his partner? If his game is in a place where he doesn't need that anymore, it might be a good pairing with Nurse. And, and I like Darnell Nurse a lot too. I never never mind the salary. There's a lot of nights where Darnell Nurse uh, is a heart and soul player for the Oilers, and he's critical for any run that they're going to go on. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if those two can make a go of it. Last question, I'll put it to you guys, and then we'll get on to our next segment. Do you see a reality where Vinny D'Arnais can push Cody CC for minutes? Yeah, Rob, I, I do. I, I, what D'Arnais has that no one else on the back end, he, he's a monster, an absolute monster. <laughs> and he just watch the little things like guys will be skating by him and he just gives them a cross check. Now, it's a cross check that if you and I did it, Ryan, it, the guy wouldn't even notice it when – Day or nay, all six foot, a hundred of them cross checks. It hurts. He, every one of the players that goes by him looks back at him. Mm -hmm. He plays with a nastiness. Uh, he's a very good penalty killer. Now he do a, he has limitations, but he also has strengths that no other player on the back end for the Oilers has. So yeah, one hundred percent. I I could see him at some point pushing. Now the thing with the Oilers, there's going to be injuries on the back end. So I don't see they're going to be healthy scratches a lot. I think at some point in the first 10 games, they're going to be at six defensemen because someone's going to be missing games. It's just the nature of the beach as a, as a defenseman in the National Hockey League. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it'd be amazing if he did. If, he, if, if he's able to push above and then push CC, I mean, that'd be a pretty big drop for uh, Cody from you know the top pairing to out of the lineup or, or, or push him in. But I think those two guys are killing Pellings on the right side. You know, and for Broberg... Is he going to be a penalty killer? Maybe. He's not getting the power play, so maybe there's an opportunity to get in there. So that's why I think when I look at the right side, I feel like it's CC and Darren A killing penalties on the right side, and I don't I don't really see Bouchard. I don't think he has to do it. He could. He maybe he can. You want him to do it, but I don't think he needs to. Get him on the power play, and then uh, that leaves Broberg on the right side. So I don't know. I don't know how you can't not play Vinny. Yeah, he's got a dynamic that nobody else really has. And I think if he comes back and has shown some improvement, uh, they're going to have a hard time keeping him out of the lineup. And, and my sense is Jay Woodcroft wants to go 12 and six more often than he did last year. Uh, I don't know if that'll happen because I think he's going to like his seventh defenseman more than he likes right. his 12th forward. And coaches like to peel that lineup in there that, that they feel most comfortable with. It'll be interesting to see how it all shakes up. That was Struddy's World. You are an absolute horrendous dresser. <laughs> Is this guy blind? I hope you have a great day. Totally inadvertent. I hit the wrong button, Strauss. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank buddy. you. And that was brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products. Okay, time to dive into the stream. We're getting tons of action on the stream tonight, and we really appreciate it. Some really good comments 
about Struddy's world, and Zuby is going to blast through some of us, some of them with us. So, Zuby, bring yourself back in and uh, ask us anything. Is brought to you by Rini Buchlan, the shark of the park, Maxwell Devonshire Realty. Whether you're buying or selling a home, your success hinges on the expert advice and services provided by your real estate agent. Rini is committed to providing clients with professional services based on experience, knowledge, and skills. Call her for a no-obligation quote, 780-994-0280. Things are crazy in the real estate world right now. You need somebody you can trust. Rini is rock solid. Zuby, tons of action on the stream. What do we got, buddy? Shark of the park. Um, so our friend uh, Hontorio Momes, he said, and this kind of ties in, this is from earlier in the stream, but it ties in pretty appropriately now. Uh, what do you think is more likely, Broberg averaging 18 minutes a game or Holloway scoring 15 goals? Struds. Oh, great question. That um, is a gooder. I told you. What's more likely? I. Oh my God. I. I, I guess I'll say Holloway. Brownie. I'm going neither. I'm saying neither. I know that's why I wanted to oh. say, but what you have to pick one. Well, you had to pick one, buddy. Why? I don't think <laughs> I don't think either are going to happen. <laughs> I, I, I love you. Brownie. He's a disruptor. He, he plays <laughs> by his own rules. This guy. I will not sully my opinion with your silly game. I don't think either is a possibility. So, no go it's from a Brownie. Possibility, but I don't think. <laughs> Moving on, Zuby. By the way, I'll go with Holloway getting 15. Why not? Quit Quizmaster wouldn't take kindly to the Rob Brown attitude, I don't think. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, our friend Sherry, uh, she says, um, maybe Cece and Kulak will be a great third pairing. Is that what is that where that points to then? Is that your third, oh, your third pairing? It'd be amazing third pairing. Yeah, I'd love to have that as my third pairing. That, that's a Stanley Cup winning third pairing. But the problem is I need a, one other right shot defenseman to step up. It's Philip Broberg <laughs> on the second pair, Struds, and Vinny Darnay in the press box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to. I'd love to see. I'd, I mean, if it works out, if Broberg works out, guys, this is this is huge for the Oilers. But yeah, that's a tall ask. I think Darnay is going to put a dent in this thing, man. Because if they want to play Broberg with Ekholm, that means they'll have Kulak on the left, and it's going to be CC and Darnay. And we'll see. I, I think that might be interesting. Well, I agree. I think that, and I, I, I if they don't have, if they have Broberg in and Deharnay's out of the lineup, I, you can't play Bouchard in the penalty kill simply because he's going to be playing the entire power play. Yeah. So I, I, it's hard to take, I, I think it's going to be 11 and seven. I don't see how you yeah. can take Deharnay out of the lineup. And hmm. yes, at 100%, Kulak and Cece, that would be an incredible third pairing. I'm sprinkling some of these in here. At your home, is the toilet paper roll overhand or underhand? Which way does the paper roll? And are oh. and and do you care? Oh, I care. And I go over over the top. I call it mullet, right? Why over the top? To... Why? Because that's normal. No one wants to reach under. I'm not I'm not reaching under. I'm going over the pull down, the mullet, the waterfall, whatever you want to call it. The mullet. The mullet would be if it was in the back, bud. No, because in the front, it's, it's I'm I'm looking that way. I'm not looking this way. <laughs> oh you just confused me uh in the back in my house it's it's oh, under it's God. underneath it's up against the wall i'll never use your bathroom brownie <laughs> mine it's on the front it comes yeah, off the front you. that's thank you. three to one then three to one on the panel yeah. tonight yeah um hey do you guys do that thing too where when it's empty you just stack the new roll on top of the old <laughs> thing you just stack it on there no no Put it on. Uh, the it's one of my pet peeves. I've been when known my, to do when that. My kids don't change it. It bothers me so much. Like, yeah, just reach over, pull it out, put a new one on. We're done, right? Like, yeah. have some respect. You and Randine could drain a bottle of wine over stuff like that around this place, <laughs> studs. <laughs> if I trusted you to drink a bottle of wine with my wife, go ahead, Zuby. Hi. Um, how many fifty goal scorers on the Oilers this year? Two. Ooh. Um. Two. I'm gonna go all out. I'm gonna say three. I'm gonna say three. Who's your third? Kane. Kane. Come on. Why not? I That's like it. That's a lot of goals, man. That's 150. It is goals a lot of goals, you guys. That's a lot. This um, game scores a lot, guys. I'm gonna say one because you're gonna be more focused on playing D. No, they're not. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, and they're not. Write this down. Write it down in your diary tonight, Brownie. 150 goals scored. so skeptical. They've been talking about it all training camp, Brownie. You don't think I used gonna to do talk it? about it too, Ryan. I didn't try any harder. <laughs> uh, I love it. I Look love at that. It. Simple question. We got three different answer, answers from the panel. Yeah. Way to go, fellas. Um, I mean, Strudz, I think you'll like this one too. In the dishwasher, cutlery handles up or handles down? How does it go in the dish? How should it go in the dishwasher? Wow. Okay. I like these. It's like a tree. It's like a tree. It comes out the top, right? So I put the the business end of the fork up. <laughs> no. That's how you cut your hand, you dough head. No, no, no. It goes down. Do you have the Reach knives around. up too? Do you have the knife sticking up in the air too? Yeah, everything. <laughs> I can just grab it. I just it recently there. cut myself on a knife that was point up, a sharper yeah. knife. You don't Were do your that. Eyes closed? Yeah. Open no. your eyes, look down. Where is it at? Brownie, you and I, you and I are aligned on a lot of this stuff. Struds is an outlier on this podcast. Zuby, keep Struds him rolling, buddy. Struds is weird. And the other <laughs> thing is very weird. The other thing with that, with a cutlery part business end up, is then you're you're taking them out with your hand. You're grabbing it all by the by your hand oh, to yeah. remove. Oh it. yeah, oh, no. the germaphobe very down there point. in the small square <laughs> just I made a down. good point. Oh, you know what? I we get got... down below it. <laughs> oh, okay, you're reaching way down. <laughs> You got fingers yeah. like a sailor. Um, no, you're not. You're not reaching down to the <laughs> handle. You're grabbing no, them with your greasy I paws. Don't. No, I never do. I, I, I'm never no, eating I... a meal off of a fork. I'm bringing my own fork to your house. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, um, Jeff and others uh, asked about the Oilers and Flames heritage jerseys. I have I have a visual aid here. Yeah. Can so, you show us? Yeah. So, how about we get some uh, some grades on these? Connor looks super pumped. I like them both. I like both jerseys. I think they look cool. Yeah, that's very... I like how they leaned in to retro. Like that oiler get up, that is significantly retro. The pants and the gloves being that color, I think, I like it. I think I like that part of it the most. The rest of it, like, yeah, it's cool. But let's face it, like jerseys weren't all that fantastic back then. So this this is a good representation. But I love how vintage those gloves and pants are. Yeah, I love that too. That's what drew my eyes. Um, and I, I kind of like the Oilers banner of the name underneath your oil drop. So pretty cool. They, they've, they've done a good job. It's going to be fun. I was at the original. I used to work for CTV News here in or CTV, the sports department, and covered the original Heritage Classic. So uh, should be fun. Looking forward to that big time. Uh, can the Edmonton Oilers power play in this season break their own record? Yeah. Or, or let's yeah. Say, maybe I guess we should say will they? Let's 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 take a stand. I'm um, not looking at the power play. I'm looking at the penalty kill. I'm going to answer like Rob Brown. That wasn't the question. Like well, you don't that have to answer. That wasn't the question, Fork Boy. Let's the, see. The, let's see how boring we can make our podcast. <laughs> no, let's not talk guys. about the greatest power play in history. I'd like to focus on the kill. I want. I want them to win the Stanley Cup. They got to improve their penalty kill. That's just a fact. You know, like I. I'm just so level-headed. I don't know why I have to be the level head of one of the four of us. I'm the, it's dangerous. <laughs> Question off the stream. Let's describe Leon Dreisaitl's goal scoring ability and why it's great. Struds, I'd rather focus on Darren A blocking shots. <laughs> Can we do that? Oh. Yeah, and then he'll be taking shots after winning Stanley Cup. Sakes. Brownie, <laughs> thank goodness we have you on the podcast oh, to okay. counterbalance this defensive <laughs> nonsense. Oh my God! He he was boring in the bars, and he's boring when he talks about defense. Uh, trying to win, trying to win, guys. I don't he know, is, is that right, so but it's boring. He's right, but it's boring. Yeah, that's exactly it. Maybe a couple more. Want. Let's blitz. Let's blitz two or three out fast, and we'll. I, we'll I got one more. Thing. Maybe I got one more one handy. More maybe that this can start a discussion. Do you ever use mayonnaise instead of butter? To make a grilled cheese, and if not, what other? Give me your, give me a good food quirk that you have, a good food hack. But I recommend using mayonnaise. I saw it somewhere to make so your this grilled wasn't cheese a question instead of on the stream. No, this you're is from, just asking us random crap from the brain of Zuby. <laughs> okay, well, okay, good. What's well, your favorite color? <laughs> mayonnaise instead of butter. Struds. I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, I didn't know you could. Does it fry it the same way? Or grill it, it the same way? A little. It gets a little kind of, um, boy, I don't even know how to just, it gets a little brown. It gets almost a little crust. Gives you oh. almost like a little crust. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I I, I don't, I haven't put something on mayonnaise since 
uh, Ju- I think it was June 18th, 1987. <laughs> I think that it, it mayonnaise is, if it was rid, if the world took it out, it, it would be better off. So I'll, I, I refuse. It's no. just, it's just white fat. That's all it is. Yeah, well, this right here is white <laughs> fat right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you, can I continue, man- you can continue. I use down mayonnaise too, on right? my chicken today to bread my chicken with breadcrumbs. Oh. It was fantastic. Oh, fantastic! Oh, no. Listen, I don't, mind, I don't mind mayonnaise, but that brownie—that's that's no. taking it too far. No, that's what the recipe no. called for. I, I oh. follow my recipes. Rob Brown's the kind of guy that when they, it's getting low on the mayonnaise jar, he uses the knife and he has got to put his hand in there and his hand accidentally hits the side of it <laughs> and, he and he pulls it? out and he licks it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, no. oh I no. can, I, that is so disgusting. Yeah. Oh, hey, well, folks, I, I don't know where you're going to get this kind of valuable oil or talk anywhere else in town. Not like you have a ton of options right now. So thanks for hanging in with us here on oil or talk. Hey, Struds, people also want to know, did you lose a board on your backdrop or is that one just really dark? No, yeah, Curb84 has been all over you on the stream thinking that that board fell off. No. But no, that's just a darker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Curb, Curb's been on fire tonight. He's been pretty chirpy. Yeah. Uh, what did he say here? More brown, less Strudwick. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> that's, that's a pretty a blunt one. Well, oh, I actually, boy. I'm punching in. My name is Curb. On the yeah. internet, so yeah. <laughs> that is brownie. All right, that was Ask Us Anything brought to you by Rini Buchlan. Oh, you're rolling the music oh, already. Shoot, Did you forget about our gem of the day? No, that's okay. Yeah. We can we can do gem of the day over top of the uh, if you want to, if you want to. Uh, brought to you by United Cycle, by the way. I'm fired up because Kelly's coming over. He's going to voice his own ad, so oh. Kelly's going to stop by the Long Shot Studio here. Kelly Hodgson over from United Cycle. He's going to get his ad voiced up. But uh, obviously, United Sport and Cycle, it's your home for hockey, sticks and skates, to masks, pads. They can get you outfitted and ready to dominate on the ice. Visit them in store. Check out that great collection of gear. Or check them out online, www.unitedsport.ca. Struds, before you give us the gem of the day, I'm going to award a contributor of the day. Sherry Frazzy on our stream has been a bastion of positive energy. Yeah. She was hanging in before we got started when Zuby couldn't get his crap together. And she's just been, honestly, everything that's come out of her mouth on this stream tonight has been positive and uplifting and upbeat. So thank you, Sherry, for your positive influence. You should maybe curb, maybe you should pay a little attention to <laughs> Sherry. Go ahead, Struds. All right. Well, I know I'm going to take a lot of heat, both from all of you and people on the stream. But I'm calling my own number today for the gem of the day. You can't. I I <laughs> you can't. Gonna, I'm, yes, there's no rules. There are no <laughs> rules on this gem. I'm calling it. And, I, and my the gem of the day is this. If you're going to wear red pants, you better be a good golfer. <laughs> Jason Strudwick. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, one's for buddy. you, Jack Michaels. <laughs> we love you, Jack. Absolutely love you. You do fantastic work. Sorry you weren't here to defend yourself. Uh, that was an unfair <laughs> fight here on the podcast tonight. Uh, Gem of the Day brought to you by our good friends at United Sport and Cycle. That's going to wrap up this podcast. It's been an adventure. Zuby, why don't you take the rest of the night off, bud? You've earned it. I got promos to cut. We got to oh. We got to get this thing, everybody, pumped up to watch this tomorrow. By the but way, uh, the first the first episode of Got Your Back, LeBron and Rashog is going to drop tomorrow. And we got a great guest, Taylor Hall joining pierre and i he's riding shotgun next to connor bedard had a great got your back story a couple of brothers got into a fist fight one of them sticking up for him you'll have to check out the podcast to find out who it was uh so check that out that's lebron and rashog that'll drop tomorrow mid-morning in the meantime have yourselves a fantastic finish tonight and thank you for your contributions oh you rolled the music too soon you just had to start it again, Zuby. I heard that. This is the first time I started. Yeah, so early. We're, we're on round two. Yeah, that's on you. One final mistake to end the night for Zuby. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Good Cheers. Night.